Hi, this is Corey McCarthy, and welcome to a new episode of Fit, Formidable, and Fantastic. That's right. Go F yourself, and happy Friday. Um, I'm going to give some tips in this episode. This is not really a scientifically based episode again either, but it's a subject matter that I'm seeing brought up a lot by uh, by new lifters, and I guess lifters who just aren't aware, aren't... Um, getting creative or whatever, and I guess they just want some advice is given to them so they can just digest it and use it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And again, please pardon um, my voice, my uh, tone, and of course my red nose and everything right now because I am at that, I'm still getting over those last stages of this cold. It's just doesn't want to seem to let go. The The vast majority of it's over, thankfully, but um, it's just this last bit of congestion and drainage and everything else so it's a nasty one that's going around here and a lot of people I know are getting it so anyway my subject this week is about traveling as a bodybuilder um, and getting what you need as a bodybuilder while traveling well here are some tips that work for me one let's talk about training well depends on how long you're going to be gone I've done in 2014 at least I did two uh, 10 day trips. I did one in London and I did one trip where I went to Greece for 10 days. And, um, you, some of you might remember the Greece trip because that was during the period of time that I was doing videos where I started doing videos and I actually filmed an episode in Santorini. Um, but anyway, so I did not work out with weights in those 10 days. Um, the way I looked at it is, I mean, I did get exercise. I walked everywhere, and I, and in Santorini, for instance, I swam a lot. Um, there was a pool, and there was also a local beach. Um, but anyway, what I'm trying to say is, is that it's really up to you. Um, my philosophy was, and my feelings were, I never really take time off from the gym, except, of course, in a situation where I'm sick. I rarely ever take time off from the gym. That means week after week after week after week after week, I am plugging away. And the most time I do is pull back a bit on frequency, um, like go from five days down to three days to give my body a chance to kind of kick back a bit and recover um, before I jump back up to intensity, uh, jump in intensity and frequency, et cetera, et cetera again. Um, basically a little down period or a deload, as you want to call it. So I look at it as like during my trip in March to London and my trip in June to Santorini as chances for me to just give my body a chance to recover. So I actually just took 10 days fully off the gym. And like I said, I still got exercise via lots of walking. I mean, a lot of walking, even in London and Santorini. I walked everywhere pretty much. I got some cabs, but mostly walked everywhere. Um, and of course, swimming uh, in Santorini, which was perfect. Um, so that was really it. So really, it's up to you. It's like, how long will you be gone? And how long? And and, and can you um, mentally take off training? Otherwise, what I would say is is before you leave for your trip, you know, research research what gyms are available in that area. Maybe even call them um, and and see if you can get day passes or or what what you have available for you. You may just end up having to literally not train for the X period of time that you're uh, on trip. Um, in the case of Santorini, for instance, I did do research in advance, and I found that I was going to be staying in Aya, and the local gym was in Fira. So it wouldn't have been too convenient for me to be getting to with everything else that I had planned while I was there um, for those 10 days. So I just figured, give myself a 10-day break and use and do other activities to stay active. You're not going to lose muscle in 10 days. I didn't lose muscle in 10 days. In fact... I, uh, I And I don't quote me on this. I don't have any research to back this up. But I remember I think I read Jim Stepani saying something about uh, oh, um, detraining occurs at the four-week mark, technically. Um, and that is if your nutrition and everything is in check to keep things maintained. If you're just not training by the four-week mark, regardless of nutrition, you will, you will start to detrain. You'll notice you'll start to detrain. So, but for things like a week, two weeks, ah, don't worry about it. If 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 you if you um, can't get a gym or you just want to have a short break for yourself, you might find, and I did personally, that your strength is actually up after a short break on some lifts. So there's that. Sometimes as bodybuilders, we do need to realize that as OCD and as on as we are, and as and as dedicated as we can be, sometimes we do just have to like pull back a bit 
and enjoy life a little bit and relax. That does not mean, you know, just stop working out for months at a time. I mean, for a little one or two week vacation, don't sweat it. So I want to emphasize that. Because when I was back from both of those places, I was right back in the gym the next day. Jet lag or not. Next is protein requirements. Um, and, and this could be true for all nutritional requirements. But I'm saying protein because protein powder. People always ask, can you bring it on a plane? The, I guess it varies. So let's, let's put it this way. I brought in, mylar, in a Mylar bag, because I buy from True Nutrition, I bought... Um, custom blended protein powder. It's not an official packaging or anything. It's in a Mylar bag with a printed label, um, as True Nutrition typically does. And I brought that to London, and I brought it again to Santorina, Santorini via London. And I got through customs in both directions, even from Santorini back to London, back to, to New York, um, with the, the opened bag with the remnants in it. And same thing with London back to New York. I got on the, on the plane. Even though at that point, the Mylar wasn't even, e even factory sealed. Um, and they didn't give me any shit. Now, on the way to London on my March trip, I did get questioned about what was in the bag. I just pointed out the label. I said it's protein powder. I actually jokingly gave a flex to the, uh, to the, to the um, TSA worker, which, you know, I'm just trying to keep it light and fun. I was laughing about it, and I said, you know, clearly I need my protein. And he laughed and had a good laugh with me and sent me on through. But, of course, don't joke with somebody if you get the impression that their personality is not one you can joke with because there are some people that might um, just be dicks, and they don't, get, they don't get humor. They have no sense of humor. So that might actually put you in more hot water. Just be safe, you know, unless you want to pal around a bit and lighten, up the, lighten things up a little bit. Just explain what it is. Show the label. It's protein. If they ask you to have a swig or a taste or they want to examine it, whatever. I didn't have any problems. Again, I brought protein to Los Angeles from New York. I've brought protein to London. And I brought protein to Greece via London. And all of this within the last year. Um, well, actually, uh, um, Los Angeles was 2013. But... London and Santorini were both within the last year, and I had no problems at all. Um, but again, don't take my word for it. You might still want to call ahead and tell them what you're doing. Um, I did that as well, and I still had no problems when I got there, despite I didn't even have to mention that I had called ahead. I just walked in assuming it would be okay. Um, uh, I guess, what else would there be like, you know supplements and whatever things like this like the protein you know pack things don't always assume that something's going to be in the location this was see now in a place like london it's very expensive but you can find a lot of things in location but in greece for instance that protein i brought with it was a fucking godsend because there was not a lot of options for vegans to get protein in greece so i pretty much just had a lot of protein powder and then on the sides had like things like fruits and nuts and seeds and shit like that and and fava beans and whatever um, and just made up the difference there so what I would recommend is um, and this is very true for vegans especially because you know you're gonna have eating requirements find out use Google talk to people who are from the area um, go to message boards um, Call people locally if you happen to know somebody you're going to be staying with or whatever. Call the hotel if you're staying in a hotel. Ask what's around the area. Ask how easy it is or isn't easy for somebody who's in a specific type of dieting. And whether you're not vegan, maybe you're gluten-free or whatever, call ahead. Plan ahead. Planning. I made a point of this in previous videos. Planning is essential uh, in bodybuilding. If you are a bodybuilder and you are a serious bodybuilder and you are serious about it, likely you plan a lot. So this shouldn't be anything new for you. So plan. Plan by bringing protein. Plan by finding out what kind of restaurants there are, what kind of shopping there is. Plan um, to find out how local this stuff is to your hotel and where you're going to be. So you don't find yourself saying, oh yeah, there was this great grocery store, but it's like 15 miles away from the hotel. And then you find yourself in a very inconvenient situation unless you're willing to cab over, get a big load of groceries, and bring it back to your hotel for the entire go. So you don't have to make a couple trips or a few trips. So plan, uh, pack what you can, but be wary of TSA guidelines when it comes to liquids. That is one thing that they do have an issue with is liquids. So um, I think it's three ounces or something like that, and you can only have up to 10 of those 
uh, three, 10 three ounce bottles or as many bottles as you can fit into a large, like a gallon size Ziploc. Don't quote me on that, but go to the TSA website, for instance. I think it's like however many three ounce bottles you can fit into like a gallon Ziploc bag. I think that is the limit. And they have to be um, three ounce bottles. So, uh, and, and that's perfect because if you go to a travel department in any grocery store, you can buy things like sanitizer, shampoos, conditioners, um, deodorants, etc., etc., in the proper size. And, uh, and that's what I did for London and did for Santorini because I wasn't sure what I was going to, you know, run into there. I, I, in fact, I was informed ahead of time by some Greek people um, that I know uh, that Santorini is not very easy for vegans. So I really uh, planned ahead for that one because um, I did not want to have the stress on location. Um, so that covers really working out. Um, should depending on duration and if you and if you feel like you want to or if you need the time off um and that covers dietary needs supplements and that sort of thing um beyond that like i don't think there's really anything else to say about traveling i think that's that's what i've learned personally about the, the traveling i've done as a bodybuilder and i have done my share i've done trains i've done planes and i've done automobiles so i've kind of hit it all and that's my experience so, um, again, I'm not saying that you're going to run into the same, uh, you know, the same ease that I have to some degree. Uh, you might just hit the wrong TSA agent. And I don't know what to tell you about that. That's not, you know, I, 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 I didn't have that problem. But I'm just giving you tips that have worked for me. But you might still want to, you still want to plan ahead, but most certainly in every aspect of it. And you definitely want to call. You want to inquire. So you can at least feel a little more confident. So don't just take my video as, as the end-all, be-all word on the subject matter. Um, I, I, I don't know what else to say. I think that covers it because really when it comes into training, it's diet, it's sleep, and it's exercise. And I just covered diet and exercise on the road. Uh, and sleep, you're hopefully going to have a hotel room, so <laughs> you'll get that there. Um, oh, jet lag. Um... The only tip I really have for that, some people say melatonin helps if you can find a good source of melatonin um, to take pre-flight and to take post-flight on your first night in whatever the location is if you're experiencing jet lag. What I could say is, and what has worked for me with London, with Australia, with um, even California, that is to whatever time you arrive, no matter how much it sucks, stay awake until the local night. Um, this is just my own personal experience, my own personal trick that I use, and it never has failed me, except the one time that I didn't take this advice. Um, but um, And that is, whenever you arrive, just stay awake, the f whatever's left of the day, and go to bed that night, um, their night, so you can try to sink into their schedule. Now, for me, for London, that wasn't terrible because I think uh, I remember I arrived and got through customs and I was at, I was back in my hotel but I was in my hotel by about 2 p.m. Um, their time 2 p.m. local even though I'd flown out like 10 50 or 10 30 p.m. New York the night before so I was really thrown but I stayed awake from 2 p.m. till their night even though I was a little a little weary feeling and I was fine the next day I actually didn't have any real jet lag to speak of for that 10-day trip I but um, in Australia, two of the times that I arrived in Australia, I got in around like four or something in the morning. Um, and I had been flying for like over 24 hours, mind you. And then I land at four in the morning local time. So it's fucking butt crack of dawn. But I forced myself to stay awake from four in the morning all the way till Australia's night. And then I went to bed. And that, and even for Australia, even such a massive time zone jump, I didn't have a jet lag problem in either of my trips. But that first day when I arrived at 4 a.m. was fucking hell. Oh, my God, it was fucking hell. Um, but I'll take one day of hell rather than having a, anywhere from a few days to a week of being fucked from jet lag. So anyway, I think I've covered everything when it comes to travel, training, and 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 being on the road as a bodybuilder, um, and uh, and all that logistics. And again, my big tip is 
plan. Planning is behind almost everything. Anyway, if you have anything you want to add or some comments you want to make, please drop them in the comments below. Um, I'm really tired. Um, I just got back from training. Actually, that's when my hair is wet. Uh, I had a shower. Um, so anyway, I will see you guys on Monday for a regularly scheduled episode. It might get up a little later than normal. Um, I have some things I've got to do on Sunday, so uh, I won't be able to film on Sunday. So I actually have to film on Monday for a Monday release, as opposed to the day before for the next day's release. Um, so my Monday video might be a little late, just to let you guys know. But it'll be on Monday. It'll just be a little later on Monday. Um, otherwise, have a, guys, have a good weekend. Stay fit, stay formidable, and stay fantastic. I'll see you around. <laughs>